Good day to you. I hope you're keeping well. In England, this uh, lock-up is dragging on a bit. Some of my students are feeling it. But I hope you're, you're all keeping well. I'd like to share with you something of a, an insight that I think I've had. And do remember, this could all be baloney. I've been using the microphones, had the opportunity I can go into school, luckily it's empty, but uh, support staff and so on are there, and I can use the room so I can make some noise and I can do some recording. So I've been using my microphones for real, not just on gigs, which were real, but uh, in a rather more detailed way with recording. And I thought, why not? You've been reviewing them, if you're going on about this, that and the other. Can you actually use them, dude? That's what it comes down to, isn't it? So that's what I've been doing. You'll see some of my videos are all very live, no compression, no EQ, the way I like it. And something occurred to me. I've been doing some photography as well recently, and I thought, uh, what I'm after is a portrait microphone. Now, if you'll bear with me, this here is a portrait lens. Well, why is it a portrait lens? I'll tell you why. I've got what the uh, what's desirable, and maybe will this work for microphones? Because I think it does. So this one, if I can undo the leather cap, is an 85 millimeter lens on a 35 millimeter. This film body, but a full frame. It's called digital. Would be 35 millimeter. The lens isn't as big as it seems. It's quite big, as you can see. But that's the lens hood. Incidentally, the lens hood is to stop stray light hitting the uh, elements and causing kind of ghosting. Obviously, it doesn't need to be too long, otherwise it will be in the frame. So that's the lens hood. And there's the 85mm. Gorgeous thing. Pentax A-Star 1.4. Which means it's a wide aperture, which is why it's so fat. It lets a lot of light in. More on that later regarding microphones. Now, 85mm is slightly um, magnifying. 50mm used to be considered a standard lens for that uh, size, 35mm film, and that was meant to give a similar uh, rendering to the human eyesight. The slightly longer lens that that is, is about perspective perspective is viewpoint only it's where you are so if you stand here's my model if i'm very close to my model and taking a photograph from there the nose distance from the nose to the camera and the plane of the face to the camera is noticeable if i do it like that it's about 50 percent that gives an exaggerated nose. Same as you look in the back of a spoon and look at your face. It's why selfies used to look like that, but I'm wondering about selfies now because I've seen some of them because you can't hold the thing far enough away. It's too close, so the distance from the nose to the camera and the plane of the face of the camera is exaggerated. So it gives you that. But I wonder if there's some jiggery-pokery digital going on because some of the selfies now, or maybe they're using selfie sticks, which is what they're about to some extent. If I use... A magnifying lens, an 85mm, it means then to fill the frame with this creature, maybe I can be here. So let's say the lens is where the mic is. So now the distance from the lens nose to the lens and the plane of the face to the lens is nearer the same. Some people use a 135, which I do, which is even longer. Some people use a 200, some people use a 600, they have to shout. But what that does, it tends to flatten the features which people find flattering. Because if you're using a long, long lens, you can imagine the distance between the nose and the plane of the face compared to where the lens is negligible. People find that flattering. Also means that various stuff with the background and so on, so the subject tends to stand out. Okay, we'll come to that with a microphone. It's working distance, if you will. The next thing with the uh, portrait lenses is they tend to be fast. They let a lot of light in. 
That means that the out of focus areas become more accentuated. The more you shut the aperture down, the more everything's in focus, the more you open it up, the more the background blur disappears, not distracting. So again, it draws attention to the face portrait. Okay, I'm going to go through a few more things about the lens and then relate them to my portrait microphones. So I've talked about the focal length, the magnifying aspect. I've talked about having a fast lens, lets a lot of light in but creates a more out of focus blur either side. Resolution, not harsh. So for portrait lenses, you need the resolution, the definition, because you don't want eyelashes and things if you're quite close up to be all fuzzy and blurred. You want the eye to be really uh, clear. But at the same time, people don't like high contrast or exaggerated contrast because it makes um, shows up every little pimple and flaw. You might want it for None of this is a rule, but generalization. You might want it in certain circumstances, but often they don't. So high resolution, but not harsh. In fact, there are soft focus lenses, which deliberately do stuff to soften. And there are filters, old school filters. You do it now digitally, but you'd screw them on the front. I've got a few. And it would create a dreamy soft focus effect from reminiscent of maybe the 20s or something or 30s. Okay. Colour casts and chromatic aberration. Well, colour casts is with a lens that's got very nice colour, but they have slightly colour hues. Some are cool, some are warm, some are a bit of this. Some of the older ones used radioactive glass elements, and they go yellow over time, so everything has a slight yellow cast. Chromatic aberration, that's the way you correct for fringing, colour fringing. I won't bother with that, but you, what I'm basically saying is you can understand this is all a compromise. None of this is perfect. You alter one... You have to alter something else, and you have to do this, but that does that. Like with microphones, perhaps. Distortion, barrel and pincushion. For architecture, obviously, you want your straights to be straight. You don't want it like a pincushion or like a barrel. Some people said, not so fussy for portraits, this slight pincushion people found maybe flattering for portraits because it tended to narrow the face. So again, with microphones, huh, a certain shape to them. But what I'd say about that is, what if you've got a quite narrow face anyway? And then you use that lens like that. You look even narrower. So it's like, who, who are you planning this for? Maybe that was just an excuse. They could say, ah, oh, but actually it's good for portraits because it narrows the face because I couldn't correct for it or couldn't correct for it for the price, even though there's a limit anyway to what you can do. Same with microphones. Usability. Well, focus, beautiful focus on this. Manual, designed for manual, doesn't do automatic. Nicely weighted and smooth. And you need it because of that shallow depth of focus to be really accurate. Usability, is it is it too heavy? Is it too big? No, but don't want it too much heavier or bigger. So those kind of um, things, same with a microphone usability and then finally I've put there's probably more but this will do won't it a balance of the above so it's hmm, how are you going to mix all those together are you going to make something that's prohibitively expensive okay so I've been using my mics and this is why it's occurred to me a portrait microphone so let me apply these things to the microphone this perspective, whether it's a 50mm or an 85mm, magnifies slightly. I'm going to say, I'm going to relate that to the working distance of the microphone. Some of them just die when you move them away, because you want that uh, rendering of your voice. And then some of them are way overblown if they're too close. Some very smooth and give you a wide range of... So I'm going to say that's a good, for me, vocal portrait microphone. Voice isolation. So with the lens, we have these wide apertures, which are expensive to correct for and make the thing big and heavy and expensive. But you can isolate the face with the blur behind and so on. So I relate that to the microphone. 
to some extent the polar pattern. So you've got this, but also do you want it quite narrow so that uh, depending on where you work, of course, in the studio, maybe not such an issue. But do you want that to really isolate your voice from everything else that's going on? You probably do, to some extent at least. Resolution. Rather like the portrait lens. Yeah, you want to be able to see all that stuff in there, not mine. But some people's got lovely eyes and the eyelashes. And you want all that, but you don't want harshness really, generally speaking. So again with a microphone. Resolution, definition, but without hard artifacts. Tonal casts and frequency distortion. So rather like the lenses with a colour cast, this has a very nice colour rendering as do many of modern lenses. This one's quite old, about 35 years I think. And in your microphone then, do you want a flat frequency response? Or do you want a colour cast? You see with lenses and photography now, could be done with film to some extent, a lot of fiddling about, we needed expert, experts could do it though. Some even retouch the actual print later by hand, painted on it in a way that would you wouldn't notice. Well, you wouldn't notice they'd done it, but the effect is there. But all this can be done digitally now and, and is uh, done digitally. In fact, to the extent that um, some of the cameras, if you've got a whole system, not this, it's old school, but some of the new ones, they know what the lens is. And instead of correcting for it in the lens, it corrects for it in the camera. Save you doing it in Photoshop and get rid of the chromatic aberration with one click, mostly. Pin distortion and barrel distortion, you can get rid of it. One click. Vignetting where the sides, uh, corners are slightly darker, get rid of it with one click. Don't know. So in your microphone then. I'm going to do a video on this for where I think microphones could go. But that's another story to do with uh, in microphone correction, perhaps, or alteration. So there you are. What do you want in your frequency? Distortion. Some mics have a little bit of grit and distortion. Do you want that? Usability. Under usability, I'd say general weight. Likelihood of dropping it. The pops and plosives, part of the usability. You correct for those as best you can, but you're going to alter something else rather like the lens. It seems to be there's no getting away from it. Where's your balance? So, I'm going to do a video then. This is a precursor, if you like, because it's struck me on my uh, portrait microphones. On what I want out of a microphone to make a portrait of my voice and my singing and which of the microphones that I have that I'd give the stamp of uh, a portrait microphone. So it has these things which I'm into. For me, I can tell you what that is, you know already, flat frequency response from way down to way up. Gentle, clean proximity suits me. No boom and bluster. I don't want any accentuation. The accentuation, as I've said many times, to me is like a, a foil for definition somehow. Just pump that bit up there and it sounds like, tch, tch, tch. oh yeah, this microphone's really sharp, like you can pump the colors up or some lenses pump the contrast up. So it immediately sort of whacks you, but when you look at it afterwards, it gets a bit tiring. And also, you notice the detail isn't really there. You're just blown away by the, the contrast. That's it. Keep well.